Good evening. Thank you, Rabbi Feigenbaum, for your technical assistance. <clears throat> this uh, week, we not only begin a new uh, portion, but we begin a new book, the Book of Numbers. And indeed, just like uh, the United States, every 10 years conducts a census. This is the year of the census, 2020. We learn about the biblical census that took place as the Jewish people were traveling in the desert, making their journey towards the promised land. But this census did not just take place once, it took place frequently along the journey. Unlike the census today, which the primary, <clears throat> primary purpose is to allocate resources, to know how to allocate resources, how many hospitals does this municipality need? How many parks do they need? How, you know, what about the electric grid based on the population shifts over the years? This census that took place in biblical times had a much more lofty purpose. I think that's something that we can relate to in our challenging times of COVID. When we're all <clears throat> once again re-examining, reflecting and having some introspection about the most fundamental questions in life, including about how much and what way are we impacting the world for a positive way? What can we do or what can we do to impact the world in a positive way? So the fact that the Torah teaches us that there were multiple and frequent censuses along the way the rabbis have taught us is to reinforce this idea we're not just like counting sheep counting people but rather to reinforce the notion that every single person counts every single person makes an impact like no other person not only in the world but like nobody that has ever existed from the creation of beginning of time until the end of time. You are unique. And in fact, what you can bring to this world is unparalleled to any other person that has ever existed or will ever exist. When we see this idea, the way the Israelites were counted, we are counted like the stars. God told Abraham, We'll go outside and you will see the stars in the heaven. And he says, Ko so too your descendants will be. And the idea of a star, including in our own English language, we refer to somebody that's exceptional as a star, a movie star, a sport, sporting star, or we would even say a superstar. So what's the idea of a star? The idea of a star is in the most literal sense, the star even has an impact millions of miles away, shining its light. The star is a source of light that can have an amazing impact throughout the galaxies <coughs> and universe because there's a source of light. Every single person, as they were counted, was reinforced with this message that you are a star. A star doesn't necessarily mean a movie star, someone that's in the news, a superstar, but rather a star can just mean living your life in a very meaningful and impactful way just by spreading goodness and godliness into this world. <clears throat> just being a force for good because you never know what kind of impact your decisions and your actions have today upon future generations. So we all really have the ability to be a star. Everybody is a star in their own unique way. And in fact, we champion in Judaism, traditional Judaism, we champion this individuality that every person is a star can, can shine their light into the world in their own unique way. As we find in the Passover Seder, there's a special message to the wise son, the wicked son, 
the simple son, the son that doesn't even know how to ask because every single person has a way of spreading their own light and we have to communicate separately to each of these different sects, each of these different children. There are different tribes within the Jewish people and that's what we find in this week's portion as well. There was the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Shimon and so on and so forth. So there's this diversity amongst the different stars that we have to go ahead and recognize that the way this person will shine his star in the world is not the way she will shine her star in the world. And everybody has their own unique purpose and destiny that they have the opportunity to fulfill. But on the other hand, there's another way that the Jewish people are compared to. And in fact, it's not only, it's not only the way that God promised Abraham, in fact, he did promise them this way, but we find that this week's Haftarah begins with this passage as well from the book of Hosea. It says in the book of Hosea, <coughs> of the Haftarah of Parshas Bamidbar, which will not be read this year, actually, just incidentally, because it's a special Haftarah this week, being the, the, the eve of Rosh Chodesh, which is Sunday. But the Haftarah for the weekly portion of Amidbar starts off by saying, that the count of the Jewish people shall be like the sand of the sea. Well, how many grains of sand are there next to the sea? The prophet continues, Asher lo yimeid velo yisafer, that can neither be measured nor be counted. You know, we're not exactly, we're known for many things. I mean, the Jews, let's, let's be honest about it. We're, we're known for a lot of things. We're known, uh, you know, for being, you know, maybe good doctors, good lawyers, make, we know how to make a good pastrami sandwich. But being a people that can either be measured nor counted doesn't seem to be one of them. Because after all, we're a rather small group amongst the family of nations. We're rather, <clears throat> we're rather small. We're just about at the most 15 million people out of a community, global community of 7 billion. So what does it mean? And this, by the way, this number historically has adjusted here and there, it's gone a little up, a little above 15 million, it's gotten significantly lower than 15 million, but we've never been a people of 600 million, 700 million, 300 million. We've always been, <clears throat> we've always been small in numbers. So what does it mean when the prophet says that the Jewish people will be like the sand, which will be neither measured nor counted? a powerful insight from the Svasemis, one of the Hasidic rabbis, and he says that if you go to the beach and you lift up a fistful of sand and you look at the grains of sand in your hand, they're nearly infinitesimal, very small, minute, almost microscopic. Well, what can, what can a grain of sand do? Almost nothing. It's, you know, doesn't completely insignificant. But when you put one grain of sand together with another grain and then another, they band together mile after mile of sand at the beach that can stop the oceans from flooding the world. Sand banded together, the tiniest grains of sand when they come together can actually unify and solidify and protect the world. And that's the message, says the rabbi, regarding our <clears throat> comparison to the sand next to the sea. It's not because we're so numerous in quantity, but rather it's when we unify, we become such a strong force, such a strong force to be reckoned with, we can stop the most powerful adversaries from taking us over. So then the question we have to ask ourselves, we see two competing visions of how we as a people should be functioning. Functioning like stars 
which champion our individuality. Each person is a star. And then we find that we're compared to the sand. And we're compared that we're not significant at all, each in our own right, but rather only when we come together. So which one is it? Are we a people that is compared to the stars? Or are we people that are compared to the sand? And the truth of the matter is, it's a delicate balance. It's a delicate balance, shall I say, between unity and diversity. Of course, we have to go ahead and work on unity. But on the other hand, we have to recognize the diversity. Unity doesn't mean that everybody has to look the exact same way, you know, talk the exact same way, be it, conduct themselves in one monolithic way. We have to recognize there's diversity amongst our people. There's diversity amongst our Jewish community, Jewish people. There were 12 tribes of Israel. They, each tribe had its own flag. Why was it necessary for each tribe to have its own flag? And the reason is, is because each tribe represented its own diverse message. So we recognize that diversity. But the diversity, it doesn't mean that everybody should be becoming their own faction and everybody becoming their own, their own independent entity. That's when we get into trouble. Torah famously tells us to skodidu, and the rabbis have taught us in the Talmud, to skodidu means otasu agudos agudos. Don't become factionalized. Don't become make factions. So, so, so then, then, then what? Are we supposed to all be in one group and one, you know, to identify as one monolithic group? No, the answer is no. We recognize the diversity. We champion individuality, but under one, the flag of one people. The flag, one people under God. The problem we get into as a people is when we, we, go, we sway either too far into being individuals or too far to being one monolithic group. We have to recognize there has to be a healthy balance between being stars and being the sand. We have to recognize that it's important for us to embrace our individual and unique mission. We all have to play the music that we are blessed to play in this world, literally or figuratively, but then remember, you're a musician within an orchestra. You're not a musician that's just going off by himself and playing by himself. You have to be a musician within the orchestra of humanity, the orchestra of the Jewish people, the orchestra of Klal Yisrael. When you have musicians going off here and musicians going off there, that's when we get into trouble. But on the other hand, we're not asking everybody to play the guitar. We're not every, asking everybody to play the drums and we're not asking everybody to play the flute. We're asking everybody to play what they're best at. There has to be a healthy balance between diversity and unity. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> one of the casualties of this most extraordinary time of COVID has been the lack of understanding our place in this world, understanding our place in this world of how we understand, you know, unity, how we understand what the, the precious cost of when we don't have unity and understanding of how to balance that delicate notion of diversity with the powerful message of unity. My blessing is to all of you tonight let us remember what the prophet has taught us. Yes, we're stars. Yes, each of us should shine our own light. But we have to remember we're just one grain of sand amongst a greater community. Yes, we're musicians. But we have to remember we're musicians among a great orchestra. If we reinforce that message within us, we have a path forward understanding how we can move forward as powerful individuals within a powerful community in Kalei Yisrael. Have a wonderful Shabbos.